first, okay, the first part of the question before you start doing anything, you must read that paragraph there. You analyze your your graph, okay, then you move on to answering the question. So the question says the radius of the circle is square root of 10. Okay? So as you can see from this circle here, P that means the radius, P up to this point here, that's also a radius. This is point B, so P B is also a radius. When it says calculate the value of K, okay, if point B is to the right, point B is to the right of P. So this point P is to the left of point B. Right? Clearly show all your calculations. Right. Now, in my case, I'll give the distance formula. That's why they gave us the length of the radius. So I'll use the distance formula and the coordinates of P and the coordinates of B. So I'll say PB is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Right? This is my distance formula. Remember, you can also write the distance formula as p v squared equal to x, x squared, x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared without the square root. But here, because I want to determine the value of k, I try to put the what? The square root. Then, when there's p v here, p v is a radius, so it's the square root of 10. And it's the square root of 10. Right? Then, Inside there, I'll put my square root. It will be x2. Now, it's your choice to decide which one is x2, which one is x1. So I'll consider the, the coordinates of p as my x2 and my y2. So this would be minus 3 minus k squared plus my y2 is going to be 4 minus 1 squared. Right? Then, to remove that square root, I have to square both sides. So if I square both sides, I'll end up getting 10 equal to minus 3 minus k squared plus 3 squared. If I remove the square root sign by squaring both sides. So you can put it here and write square there. And then we will get it there. Right? Now to simplify this, remember what is the objective? To find what? K. That's the objective. There is no need to remove brackets here. There is no need. You take this 3 squared, which is 9, to the left. You get 1 on the left, and then you end up with minus 3 minus k all squared. Okay? If you try to remove brackets here, it will be a long method. There is no need. Right? Then, when you get here now, you can write it as minus 3 minus k squared equal to 1, then you take the square root of both sides. Okay? You get the square root to be plus or minus 1. Okay? Then you get minus 3 minus k equal to plus or minus 1. So you have two values. So what happens if p squared? p squared is equal to 9. Yeah. So if you take the 9 to the left, 10 minus 9 will give you a value. Right? Then I can write this up as minus 3 minus k. If I take the positive, now remember, here, here since they say this is very important, this point, it says point B is to the right of P. Well, you can get a value to the left of point P. So minus 3 minus k, if I take the positive 1 there, I'll end up getting my k as negative 4. Right? If I take the negative 1, I'll end up getting my k as negative, that will be negative 2. So the question will be now, which value would you take between these two? k power to minus 4 and k power to negative 2. Because at p here, x is what? Negative 3. Which means at b, it would make sense to take what? So then you say, therefore, therefore, K is equal 
parts negative two, so you reject that one. Okay. Then you are done. Right? Please be aware of what I did here. I didn't remove the brackets by using four words, it's unnecessary. Okay. The what? Okay. With regards to the three squared, I didn't write this here. 10 minus 9 equal to minus 3 minus k all squared. One you can write it down, but it's not necessary. Alright. Any question? So here, when you are answering questions on analytical geometry, you must use common sense. Okay? Common sense is extremely important when you are answering analytical geometry. Because these two questions here, they are more like problem solving. Okay? So you use common sense to answer the question. Alright? Can I get on? So, what do you like to do? No, I was trying to explain. You see, at point P here, yeah. what is the value of this? Oh, at point B, means the value of X at point B must be greater than minus P. So, among these two values here, yeah. negative 2 will be the appropriate one. That's where the common sense comes in that I was talking about. Alright? Then, the question says, the equation of the circle is given as that. Calculate the length of BC. Now we need to calculate the length from here to there. Okay? Do we know the coordinates at C and the coordinates of B? From your knowledge so far, point B and C are along the y axis. Well, what's the value of x? Zero. So it means. Since the value of x is 0, we can determine the values of y at b and at that at c. We substitute x equal to 0 into that equation. So our equation is x squared plus 6x plus y squared minus 8y plus 15 equal to 0. So where there is x here, we will put what? 0. Why are we putting 0? Because Point C and point B are along the y axis. Along the y axis, x is what? Zero. So if you put zero here, put zero there, so that's zero squared six. Now, if it is wise for you to show the step where you substitute x equal to zero, because it may be given a mark. Okay, so for this question, it's wise to that to show that, to show the substitution. You get y squared minus eight y. Plus 15 Now, this part here gives you zero, so you're left with a quadratic equation in terms of y only. Okay? Then you factorize this, it becomes a grade 8, or sorry, grade 9 quadratic equation. So to factorize this, it will be y minus 5 times y minus 3 equal to zero. Therefore, the y value will be y equal to 5. For y equal to what? To 3. Now the question is saying find the length. So here y is 5, here y is what? 3. So the length of AB, it will be y maximum minus y minimum, which will be 5 minus 3. You will get 2 units. Okay? And then you are done. You can put what? Yeah, of course. All right. Okay. So, I hope you are following me. When you are answering the questions on analytical geometry, use common sense. Ask yourself, does my answer make sense? Is what I'm doing making sense? Okay? All right. So, we have got that. And please take one of this formula. You can use this formula for vertical distances. You can also use it for horizontal distances. Where you put x here, put x there, and then it becomes x max minus x minimum. 
Okay. Ma'am, any question? You are sure you are okay? Right, the next question says, if k is equal to negative 2, which is what we got on it, calculate the size of alpha. Now here we are coming, whenever you get a question on angles now, that's angle of inclination that you have to apply. Okay, you still need to remember what your angle of inclination is. In your June control test, you have to know this type of equation, where you calculate the size of the moment. Right? Now, the best way that, that I can make talk about this is just to refresh you a little bit okay, before we do this question. First, there are two cases of the angle of inclination. The first case is when the gradient is zero. If that's the case, it means our angle of inclination is an angle between the x-axis and a straight line. So this is your x-axis, that's the y-axis. If I draw a straight line like that, my angle of inclination will be this one. It's between the x-axis and the straight line. And it is measured in an anticlockwise direction. So we can call that one feet. To find this feet, I will use this formula m equal to tan feet, where this m here is the gradient of that straight line. So this is the first case when the gradient is positive. Okay? Case two is when the gradient is negative, whereby you have your x-axis, y-axis, with a straight line like that, the angle of inclination will be that angle. So this will be this. Right? Then, here, the formula for, for doing this one now is a little bit more complex. It's theta equal to shift time of m plus 180 degrees. This is the formula that you use to find this angle of inclination. If the gradient is negative, Okay, we have to know this. Alright, then you also need your knowledge of quadrilaterals, your knowledge of triangles. Okay, the theorems on triangles, theorems on, on quadrilaterals like a thumb, a rectangle, a square, a rhombus, a kite, and a trapezium. You need to know. Okay, so if you forgot your properties of quads, you have to go back. Properties of angles, of triangles, you have to go back. But these two concepts are very important. Before we start doing the question, it's shift time now. The shift time of the angle was if the gradient is, is negative, you get a negative angle here. That reference angle, to make it positive, you get what? 180 degrees. If you get an angle which is between 90 and 180 degrees. Okay? All right, so, this is the background. Before we go anywhere, we need to know. Okay? On the 20th of June, the day before you, you come, you come, you, you go to bed, you need to make sure you are aware of this. Okay? If you don't know it, then you are going to find the question on, on angles very challenging. Right? So, let's calculate alpha. Alpha is an angle of inclination. Because it's an angle between the x-axis and the straight line. So it's an angle of what? In dimension. And the straight line is slanting to the right. Therefore the gradient is positive. So that's case one. That's the first case. So we use this formula here to calculate alpha. Okay? Fortunately, we have to determine the, the gradient of the line. We don't know the x value there. We know that y is 0 there. Fortunately, we know what k is, negative 2. We know the value of y here is, is what? 3. And x is what? 0 there. So the coordinates here are 0, 3. We know that k is negative 2, so the coordinates are minus 2 and 1 at that point. So we are going to use the coordinates at b and the coordinates at c find the gradient first. You cannot find the angle of inclination without the gradient. So, because of that, I'll say 4.3.1 M B C will be equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. My Y2, well, 
Let me make it 3 minus my y1, which is 1. My x2 is 0. My, my x2, my x1 is minus 1. So I'll get 2 over 2, which is 1. So the gradient is what? It's 1. Yes. Remember, we said point C is along the x axis. Y is here, x is 0. And we got the value of y from the previous question here. Yeah. This part. Remember that there is a connection with the question. If you fail to get 4.2 right, you will need 4.3. You are going to have issues. Well, there is a connection. So the connection to all. Okay, in most cases, the question is for some kind of connection. All right. So we have gradient of 1. I can tell you the size of the angle by doing that gradient. Okay? So m equal to tan theta. It means theta. In this case, our theta is alpha. So let me replace the theta by what? Alpha. Which means alpha will be equal to shift tan of 1, which gives me 45 degrees. You don't need a calculator for that. Okay? Each time of 1 is 45. Alright, then 4.3.2 says VWB. So the angle that we now need to find is this one here. Now, based on the angle of inclination, is that an angle of inclination? Based on the definition of the angle, it's not, because the x axis is not involved in the formation of that angle. So it's not an angle of inclination, which means you have to use the geometry concepts, Euclidean geometry concepts, to get that angle. So you combine analytical and Euclidean to get that angle. Okay? Now, I must honestly do that. This question now, 4.3.2, it requires a bit of some thinking as to how you can find the size of that angle. But it's not very difficult. Use your second what? Geometry. If this angle here is 45, you can get the size of this angle. Am I right? Okay. And it would have been about what? It would be 45. Okay. And we have a side part here. Point B, point W, point B, and point C. There are four points on the circumference. So we have a what? Cycle point. So we use this angle here. It will be an exterior angle of what? The cycle point. So you'll be equal to the interior opposite. Okay. But now we have to write that down. So to write it down, 4.3.1. First thing, I have to calculate the size of this angle here. That is TCO. So I'll say in triangle TCO, right? In that triangle there, alpha well, I can say and we put it alpha plus TOC plus plus well let me call it O O C T. O C T that's the angle I'm about to And they give me one thing with this. My sum of angles in a triangle. Right? Then, I know that this is 45. I know that TOC is 90. So I'm going to calculate OCT. Right? Just allow me to simplify it. So OCT is going to be about 45. Okay? So we got that. Then, we introduce circle geometry, cyclic part. Remember, this question here, it was for a final examination paper. So you are expected to know all your concepts. Like you guys for the gene control test. Since you have covered most of the paper two topics, you are expected to, to combine, to integrate all the, the topics. Okay? You analyze your, your circle geometry, there is some relationship. Uh, let me just open a new page there. So the next thing now is to say 
angle O C T is equal to angle B W B. Right? What's the reason for that? The reason is so water equal to 45 degrees, reason exterior angle of type in part. So you can get your full marks there. Right? So be ready for to answer a question on angle of inclination on the square test. Make sure you know what you remember what I just have got here. Okay? I don't want you to come out of the paper but I didn't know how to find that, that angle. I'm busy, I gave you the 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 idea the, the ideas behind how to find uh, the thing. Okay? These two concepts that I spoke about here are uh, now together with your geometry from red leather and check. Alright. Okay. Uh, the next question says, now this one here it requires some thinking now. A new circle is obtained when, when the given circle is reflected above the line y equal to one. Okay, before you go, okay. Okay. To do this question, you might need to draw a sketch. Okay? So if you reflect this circle here about the line y equal to 1, which is this line, right? Do you agree with me that this bottom part of the circle will end up being on top after the what? The reflection. So eventually we end up having something like this. It's not perfect, but right? something like it's always wise to draw a what? A sketch. So let's have it in something like that. Then after the reflection. Alright? So what, what happens? Do the values of x change? No. No. Why? Are the values of y what? Change. Right? And our x of symmetry is going to be the line y equal to 1. That's the reflection one. So that's what you are going to end up Right? The diameter of the, the, the radius of the circle that, that has not changed in terms of its level is to remain the what? The same. So when that happens, what would be the coordinates of the center? You say x remains the same, right? Right? Now we need to be very careful there. The distance from this center to the x is the line y equal to 1 in a very vertical way. It's 4 minus 1 is what? 3. So if I put, if I put my value for, um, for the y value, if this is 1 here, then my face image is 1, then the same one will be 2, the other one will be what? 3. So I'm supposed to have negative what? Negative 2. So the negative three, this is the four. So suppose we next try to say one unit, two, three, four. Yeah, so it is three. All right. Because in the end, four minus one must be one to three. And then if I subtract okay, from here, we just need to be sure that the distance from this point to the x of symmetry is three. So from the x of symmetry to the center, it must also be three. So this is supposed to be negative 2. Yeah. No, it's common sense. Look here. Okay, look here. Remember, this is a line of reflection. Right? It's a line of reflection. That's like our reference point. So the distance from this line of reflection is y equal to 1 to the center of the circle. It's equal to 1. If the value of y here is 4, from, from positive 4 to positive 1, how many units are there? 3. 3. 3. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. Right, up to here. It will be what? Negative 2. So I'm saying, if this is our reference point from this line here up to the center, what's supposed to be the difference? 3. 3. Three. 
Yes, because one, minus three. because one minus minus two will give you what? Three units. Okay, look here. If okay, if you are looking into the mirror, right? You are looking into the mirror. Right? The distance between you and the mirror, okay, must be the same as between the mirror and between your image inside the mirror. Yes. Okay. So I think it's easier to say it's here. it's one, it's one like one zero. The distance for the subset of three. So one minus three is equal to mirror two. Yes. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. 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 That's what that's what I wrote. Yeah. So that is just okay. right now. This question here, as I said, it requires a bit of somewhat common sense. You understand now? Before you write the answer, you need to think first whether is your answer making sense or not. Like she saw for 4.4.1, our coordinates of Q, which will be the new center, x will be minus 3 and y will be negative 2. Okay. Then for 4.4.2 4 now says equation of the new circle in that formula. Has the radius changed? No. It hasn't changed. So when you write the formula, remember the general form is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equal to r squared. So our a is going to be negative 3 so that will be x plus 3 squared plus the b is negative, so it will be 1 plus 2 squared equal to the radius is square root of 10, so it will be square root of 10 all squared. Well, let's stop writing it. Stop there. Okay. So you have to write it in the form, in this form, in a way you have put that r squared. Okay. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> huh? No, we found this the coordinates of the same. Look here. Our x value is a. It's yes. That's minus three. Where there is a here, I put minus three. Then it becomes positive. Why not x? No, you don't substitute x. You substitute the value of a. That's the value, the x value at the center. Remember, you are supposed to write the equation in this form here. You need to determine a and what? B. B. So this is your a, that's your b. Oh, I thought this was going to be x and y. No. Your final equation must have x and y only as the unknowns. The, the, the radius here we know is equal to square root of what? Of 10. Yes. They change because okay, look, if if this is the minus of the formula. So if if the value of a is negative, this negative and that negative will give you a what? The value of b is negative, but this negative is the negative of the formula. This negative by that negative will give you positive. Okay. When you write your paper, you have to be very careful about it. Alright, any question? So you get that same uh, in the square roots and the figures? Yes, because we are told that the radius of, uh, we were told in the beginning, that is the radius of the circle here is square root of what? We are told that. And we can prove that it's really square root of 10. Okay. Right? We can prove by substituting the value of k for negative 2. We can have 3. So if we say minus 3 minus minus 2 all squared, right? Plus 4 minus 1 squared. Here you get minus 1 squared. 
which is the one, there you get three squares. So you end up getting one plus nine. All this is under the square of the number. Right? You end up getting what? So that's that's how we got it. Right? I'm kind of good thing. Okay. No, it's a good thing to be curious, okay? All right. Now, when you're looking at the question, as I said, drawing like this sketch, like how I did the, it helps me to have a better picture of the question. Right? Imagine if I had that picture there in my head. It can confuse you. So, when you have your, your patient paper in front of you, when you're answering some of these questions here, you can draw whatever you like on the question. Okay, if you're given a diagram sheet, then you want, you can do whatever you want on the diagram sheet, as long as it can help you to answer the question. So, the next question now says, equation of the lines drawn parallel to the y-axis, passing through the points of intersection of the two circles. So what they are trying to say is, what are the equations of straight lines that pass through the point of intersection? Right? Let me use blue here. Right? We need to know what is the value of y here. Then x rather, what is the value of x there? Okay? Those two values are the equations. Right? Remember I told that if you have vertical lines, the equations must start with x. If they are horizontal, they start with what? With y. So we know that the value of, of x is negative what? 2. So one of the equations is negative 2. Then we need to find what is the value of, of x here. To do that, we substitute y equal to what? To 1 into the equation of the circle. It's a point of intersection. So the value of y here, we just substitute into the equation of the circle, then we get the value of x at this point. Yeah. Okay? We already know the value of x here. Negative two, but you can still prove whether it's negative two by substituting y into the into the equation. So our equation is x plus three. Now, okay, be very careful. Here. Let's see which equation we can use. But if you can use any of the two, any of the two equations of the circle, you can use any of the two. So I use x plus two squared plus y plus two squared equals the square root of ten all squared. Where there is y here. Here, I'll put what? 100. So if I put 1, I'll get x plus 3 squared plus 1 plus 2 squared. That's equal to 10. Okay? Right. That's equal to what? 10. Then don't remove brackets using 4. This will give you 3 squared equal to 10. And then you get x plus 3 squared equal to 10 minus 9 is equal to what? Nine. 1. Then I'll end up having the square root of x plus 3 squared equal to the square root. And I'll say plus minus 1. So I'll end up getting x plus 3 equal to plus or minus 1. Now if I choose the positive, I'll get x plus 3 equal to 1. The other one will be x plus 3 equal to minus 1. This one here will give me x equal to negative 2, which is, which is what I have already. I found that before. And the other one will be x equal to negative 4. Right? Again, I think I found that one x equal Okay? So, you can just do your way So, this will be the two equation. That's why it's too much because. You may not need to do this working out. You can just write the answers and you get to what? Your full marks. And then you will do that. Okay. But here, because I'm a teacher, I need to show you how you can get the answers. The best way, substitute that y equal to 1 into the equation of circles of n of those two.